Today was a chance to see what mass casualty really looks like and what the folks in Vegas have seen, what the folks in Boston have seen, just a mass influx of people in a short amount of time. And the biggest thing for the hospital is how do we keep our resources up to speed? How do we keep our staffing where it needs to be? How do we track everything that's going on? And it's an incredible challenge to do that, but the team really rose to the occasion today. We do at least two drills a year, but not in my memory have we done anything of this magnitude. We've, we've, we've throughput 103 patients today in about 35 minutes. That's just unheard of. They don't know the type of scenario. So the, the scenario today is 100 patients and it's gunshot wounds. There were patients injured from chaos and being trampled. We didn't want to use paper cards or mannequins. We wanted to use real people with makeup. So that took a lot of people and a lot of planning to do that. And then also the planning involved having every department ready, which included every department having their own plan. And so over the last year, we've done 50 plans for the hospital. So it's, a, it's been a lot of planning, but really the last six, six months was getting down into the details. Well, almost every day we sometimes have, you know, over capacity issues, multiple patients. Last week we had 11 patients come within an hour and so it's really a small drill every day here, but when it, it's something large happens in the community, it's going to really test our resources. The big test today is going to be the, the bringing in the mass casualty patients in succession with multiple numbers of patients coming at the same time and sorting those patients out to see that they get the right care in the right place at the right time. So working with all the other disciplines is always important in healthcare, but in a situation like a mass casualty, we all have to work together more quickly, knowing people's names, knowing phone numbers, contact information. Starting off early in the morning, calling a couple of friends that work at the Miro Center to open up that as a family reunification center. And if we didn't have those bridges and relationships already, we would be able to walk across those bridges at a time like this. The trauma services team, the emergency department team, it's the frontline staff that really make this tick. They're the ones that make this go. They're the ones that have the expertise in the plan. So it's really, how do we make that expertise, their planning, how do we make that fit with our system and our preparedness? And how can we get that plan socialized and educated to everyone else? So it's really them that they do the heavy lifting on this and I just try to make sure that we're on the right path. We still have our doors open to medical patients and strokes and heart attacks. So we have some of those patients coming in as well. We will not be in the way of actual patient care, so we will use hallways and corridors to stay away from the actual patient care that's taking place. You can never take a day off in a hospital, we'll always have patients, so it's how do we best serve them by preparing but also by not impacting their stay with us. That's bringing extra staff, that's simulating certain things that might impact patient care. There's a lot of different things we do to make sure that we're respecting what's going on, still delivering excellent care to every patient we see, but also on top of that preparing to, to do the same in a disaster. For a drill like this, we have a lot of things on paper, we have a lot of procedures and ways that we think we would do things, but when you're actually drilling and you have people here playing the part of those patients, thinking about the family that would be involved, um, all of a sudden those policies come to life and either they work really well or you start to realize, oh, there's gaps or there's pieces that we've understood but not understood fully. Fully, and so this is something we need to think about more. It's uh, very helpful to see what it actually be like, at least somewhat in real life. We want to learn, first of all, make sure everyone understands the plan, and then second of all, we want to see any gaps in the plan so we can adjust the plan and modify it and see where our weaknesses are and try and strengthen them up. We can't predict if something's going to happen, but we want to be ready if it does happen. So we need to extend that and plan for surge and open new areas and in order to take extra patients. It's identifying how do we sustain that and how do we look at the, the next steps moving forward. How do we improve on what we, we didn't like today? How do we add in things that make more sense? How do we communicate better? These are all things we're looking at. This is really the beginning in a lot of ways of the planning process to see what actually happened. The, the words came off paper today and it's really moving into the next phase to refine what we saw.